Hello, and welcome to not Axis and Allies. Uh, for this run, I'm going to explain the game in a bit. We're going to play as the Allies, and I'm playing against the AI on hard difficulty, hard AI mode. And what? who are we playing? Well, we're playing the Allies, and by the Allies, I mean all three of Britain, U.S., and the Soviets in World War II. Yay. So why do I say this is not Axis and Allies? Well, because it's this is actually a simplified version of Axis and Allies that you can play for free as well if you download the client AAA. Um, it's a, just a game client like this, and you can download a bunch of user-made games. People made this version of Axis and Allies, which is a lot of fun. Me and a group of friends play it once a week. And by far... By far, the Allies are the harder faction to play. We usually play with one person playing as Japan, one person as Germany, and the third person plays all of the Ac Allies because it's just a logistical nightmare. And we're going to see if we can beat the uh, the Axis up today. So, in principle, you win by conquering a number of places that have these stars on them. But in reality, how you win is you conquer the other capitals because that's basically the nail in the coffin. At that point, the enemy can't beat you anymore. So, lots of fun. So how does it work? Well, every phase has a couple of actions. First, you're going to buy, which is what we're on now. We're going to buy the units that we'll be able to deploy in areas at the end of our turn. So you buy at the start, you do all the things, and then you're going to place at the end. What are the things that you do? Well, you attack. You move your troops from places to different places, and you try and conquer territories. Because the territories, as you can see, have numbers on them. And those numbers are how many resources you're going to get at the end of your turn for your buy in the following round. They also limit how many people can get put somewhere. So if you have a factory here, you can put eight dudes down. Factory here, you can put four. Right? Simple as pie. Good stuff. And then the next thing we're going to do is, it's easier to explain in the buy menu, is when you fight, you're going to be using these different units. Obviously, these are units on the land, then there's some air units, and then there are some naval units and an AA gun. They all have these metrics here, which is their attack, their defense, and their movement. So tanks can move too, fighters and bombers can move very far, a lot of boats can move too. But infantry and artillery are quite slow. Leg infantry just huffing it across the plains. They also attack at a 1, whereas artillery attacks at a 2, and armor attacks at a 3. What does that mean? Well, because the low luck variant is on, when you attack, normally what you would do is you roll a die. So if we have an attack of 3, we roll the die. If we roll 3 or lower, we hit. But in low luck, you add up all of your people, and every time you hit 6, that's a guaranteed hit. Okay, so two tanks are guaranteed to hit once, but if you had two tanks and two infantry, you'd hit once, and then you'd have two left over on attack, and you'd hit, you'd roll the die, and if you roll a two or lower on a six-sided die, you hit. Yay. Um, simple as pie. So without further ado, I'm going to just jump into this first turn, and I think it's a little bit easier when you see it played. I'm going to buy a fighter for Russia and four infantry. I like this opening because it gives you some, some things to work with. And then as the Russians, it's very important, at least against other like human players, very important to crush as many Germans as you can early. Uh, and specifically, we want to take out, all of you guys please, we want to take out this plane in Ukraine. It can be nasty for taking out stuff in Anglo-Egypt in the future. We'll talk about the global position here in the few, in a moment, but basically, we want to we want to take this out and we want to make sure it dies. Uh, also, very notably, the artillery attacks at a two, but for every infantry that's paired off with it, that infantry that's attacking attacks as a two as well. So seven of these infantry attack at a one, but one of them will be upgraded by this artillery, so they're both attacking on twos. The tanks on threes. You can do the math and try and figure out exactly how much you're going to kill and how much you're not going to kill, but, you know, it's no biggie. Everything else here is a non-combat move, as in 
I'm going to wait till after our combat resolves to figure out what I want to do with the Far Eastern troops. Um, and without further ado, let's hit done and see what happens. So here we get to choose which battle we'd like to resolve first. We're going to choose uh, West Russia, which is here. It brings in this window, and you can see it instantly jumped into firing. We had a guaranteed hit. In fact, we had two guaranteed hits from all of our people, two tanks in this. And then we had five-sixths of another hit, which we rolled, and we hit. So they lost three infantry in the first round. Then, uh, can I see this? No. Uh, and then they hit us on a roll of five. So maybe we did something different, actually. Anyways, moral of the story is they killed two of our guys. We get to choose, as the person who's taking casualties, what we're losing. We're going to lose infantry. We will remain and finish them off. They hit us again. whoop de doo And then Ukraine. Ukraine's a little bit more sketchy because planes defend on a four. Oh, I can hover on, on it. Defend on a four, and then the tanks on a three, and then all of this stuff here defends on a two. So it adds up pretty high. They hit me three times because they got lucky. They, they got the 50-50 chance of rolling the three, killed an extra infantry. But I sent an extra tank just to be sure. And in fact, they got so lucky there. I clicked through it a bit too fast. They killed my last... I could choose my casualty to be uh, a plane or the tank. I'm going to choose the tank. Uh, but what that means is we have no ground troops left in the area. And even if we took it, we can't land planes in a place that just got conquered this round. So we'll move our stuff back. So the Germans are going to get to keep Ukraine. That's, that's really bad for us. Because that means it's income that we would have had for our next turn. It's a whole infantry, in fact. So we got unlucky and died a lot. It's not good. So we're going to move up some more dudes into the Caucasus and kind of abandon the Japanese front here. And and shimmy some, some Russians this way as well. You know what? Let's keep going. I'm not sure how the Japanese AI is going to expand, but we're afraid of them demolishing us. And the thing about us is we want to leave the minimum on the front line as possible. Uh, because the way planes work is you can use them all to attack and then you have to retreat. So if you put anything more than a dude, the opponent can really shove in all their planes and just annihilate whatever small group you have. You want to make sure you have tough groups of troops. Uh, oh, we can't land in West Russia either because we also conquered West Russia this turn. What do you know? So we'll land in the Caucasus. We'll put all of our infantry in the Caucasus because they're very slow. And we'll deploy our new plane in Russia. And I think we feel good. We move this sub over here to help protect us against the German submarines. So now we collected 26 more dollars. And the Germans are beginning their stuff. Oh, God! Um, I, was, I was under the impression I was going to get to hit buttons in between their turn to see what they're doing instead they just absolutely went 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 for it so i have i have no real idea what just happened but we can look the germans purchased five infantry and five tanks those mad lads they did a combat move into corelli i mean i can just look here they bombed us they used a submarine to blow up our transport. They sent in tanks and fighters and stuff to kill our dudes there. Whew. And then in combat, the whenever they bomb, you have a 1 in 6 chance of blowing up a plane that they send. But if they send 6 planes, for instance, you're guaranteed to hit at least 1. So they bombed us for 4 damage in the UK. So if the UK wants to use this factory, they need to spend 4 of their income to fix it. Uh, and then they they blew up our convoy here, which we had to try and help get the Canadians over, which is not good. Oh, I don't want to look at the particulars of the battle. And then they fought us in Corellia, which they also won. Oh, wow. So the casualties were one and one.
Okay. And then the non-combat move, and then they placed a bunch of units. Turn complete. Okay. So this is really scary. Because we didn't conquer the Ukraine last round, they were able to land their planes in it when they attacked it, which is what just happened. And that's that's really bad. So when we get back to the Russian turn, we may be in trouble. But hopefully, hope just cross your fingers, hopefully, we can uh, do enough with the British to really protect ourselves. Now here's an interesting thought. The Germans have an army here in North Africa. They also have a battleship here. Hmm. Yikes. Because I kind of, if we can destroy this German fleet, it's very unlikely that the Germans will ever have enough power to retake um, Africa from us. They might use their planes to sink our ships, but honestly, if they're doing that, that's kind of good for us. So that's just talking about the strategy. The British have a lot of things on the board, including some Australians. There's uh, Pearl Harbor's all lined up for the U.S., but we'll, we'll get there in a second. So first we need to do the buy. I think it's very important that we repair, which is good. And then we're going to buy, we need more transports because they sunk one of our transports. Each transport can bring a dude, a, a man, an infantry, and something else. Um, oh, wow. We're in a tight spot already. We definitely need an aircraft carrier and a fighter, I think. And then next turn, we'll try and get more and more. I'm not used to having this little cash, but the Germans got through with their bombing raid and hit us for four, which is, it says it's going to hit for three or four, but I was hoping they get shot down. What a slow, oh, that hurts. Okay, well, we're just going to do this, and we'll be very slow out the gate against the Germans for sure. Oh, no, because we need... We are desperate for a destroyer. Because we need something to be able to destroy these subs. Yikes. So, the, the subs can't be attacked normally uh, unless you have a destroyer. And then we'll get another infantry. Okay. Now, very importantly, bombers attack on a four. You can see here they attack on a four, um, but they only defend on a one. While fighters, I can see, uh, defend on a four, and they can land on ships. So our intention here is to move our convoy here, load it up with a dude and our artillery, and send them across. Okay. And then add a plane to the mix. So that will kill that German immediately upon landing if the bombard, which battleships get to shoot the land troops if there's no sea battle going on. Though it makes me wonder, is it worth sending our bomber down here to kill their battleship? I don't think we need to. I'm worried about this submarine, but we're going to have to let that slide for now. If we bring the Russian submarine up here, we can help protect ourselves because the Germans next round will be able to move all their submarines into blowing up whatever we put here. So we can ease a little bit of our burden by flying over here. The submarines won't be part of the battle because air forces can't shoot naval or submarines and submarines can't shoot air unless there's a destroyer around that helps the air force hit the subs. Subs I don't think can ever hit a plane. So we're going to blow up their convoy and their destroyer by doing this air raid. Uh, and then they have a chance of destroying one of our planes. And we're going to make sure we choose to lose the bomber because the plane will be able to land on the aircraft carrier that we're building. So this is a really good opening move, I find. Got to get into Norway. Got to start pushing into the Germans immediately or they'll come wild. They'll come swinging. You might notice that Western Europe is worth six and they're not protecting it at all. But if we go there, the Germans will move into it and just destroy us. 
So because we own Transjordan and Anglo-Egypt, we're able to go through this canal. I'm just wondering if I want to put more dudes into India or, or not. Because what I really want to do is do this. Put a decent stack in Transjordan. You know what? If we load up, we could give up India to the Japanese, which sounds bad. But that way we can go here, land a bunch of infantry in Transjordan, and now they won't be able to screw with us. And if we send all this in, then this battleship, which is very important, has two hit points. We have a 5 and 6 chance of hitting it twice in the first round, and it has a 4 and 6 chance of blowing up one of our boats. And if we go into round 2, it could blow up a second boat. But either way, we'll be able to land our planes back on our aircraft carrier and protect our little fleet. If they take Anglo-Egypt, so what? Next turn, we'll attack them again with a bunch of infantry and tanks. And then we'll use our air force to decimate them. So that feels good. Uh, the very last thing we need to do is put our sub. We have a submarine and a transport down here. I think I should put my sub up here. Because that uh, the Japanese do not currently have a, a destroyer. So we can try to annoy them like they did with ours up here. And then I think we just try and run away with this convoy. If we put people on it, it'll probably get destroyed, so we'll just run away with it. And that's it for British units, other than the Union of South Africa, but I kind of like... We'll move them a little bit, but I kind of like staying around here, because the Union of South Africa is worth two. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is fine. The Japanese have just a dominant navy, so it's... We don't want to be there with our British fleet at all. So yeah, let's uh, hope for the best. I also like sending Western Canada to help defend Alaska in case they try something cheeky. Okie dokie. I'm hitting done. Time to go into the combat moves. Conduct naval bombardment? Yes, please. So C-Zone 14 is this one here. Let's see if we can sink his battleship. We hit him and he hit us. So we're losing our destroyer, but we have sunk his battleship. Perfect. Sea zone 5 is to blow up this destroyer and transport. They did hit us, which means we're going to lose our bomber, which is a big loss for us. But destroying that convoy prevents him from sending troops back to, like, anywhere as quickly. And then the battle for Norway, he missed us. So then these planes need to land somewhere, so we're going to send them here. And these planes need to send it somewhere they're going to land on this aircraft carrier. So that feels pretty good. The Germans have a lot of momentum. They'll be able to destroy our troops in Norway, I have no doubt. But this is what we're doing. Uh, and then here it says, Sea Zone 3. These planes don't have a place to land. So we're going to end movement phase anyway, because they do have a place to land, because we built an aircraft carrier to put there with them. And then a little bit more infantry to shimmy across next time. Maybe we'll go somewhere more extravagant, like Western Europe, but usually if you can get enough troops into to Norway, you might actually be able to help the Russians survive. Alright, so that's done. Get ready for the Japanese to do a bunch of moves super, super quick, and then we'll try and decipher what the heck they're doing. Pew, 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 they're sending planes at us everywhere, attacking Pearl Harbor, Sinking our convoys. Mad lads attacking China. Now, China technically has Americans in it, so we get to take losses here. It, they're the Japanese, or not Japanese, they're the Chinese, but you know how it is. Oh, I didn't mean to remain with my... with my sub. I could have submerged it. Oopsies. Hmm. Now, a winning strategy for the Americans is often to just completely focus on Germany. However, I'm looking here, and the Japanese have their battleship 
in a position that I could attack it with my battleship and a bunch of planes and bombers, let's say. One, two, three, four, five, six. The bomber could land in Hawaii, for instance. And, uh, and we could probably destroy the battleship and cruiser in one fell swoop. Though the, what's more important is we need convoy capacity to protect ourselves against this stuff. So what's the most important is definitely an aircraft carrier. I like getting two. And then two transports is kind of... No, I already have transports. One transport. I'm worried because these German subs are so freaking devilish. And if I'm going to send my planes on a counterattack, I'm going to need more planes. And a little bit of infantry. Okay, so let's talk about what our plan is here. American combat move. Do we want to do Hawaii? Do we want to make them pay for what they've done? How much could we send there? Let's see. We could send a plane from here, here, and here. So that's two guaranteed hits and a little bit more. And they're attacking us back for one hit combined with a four and a three with one spillover. So there's a one in six chance they get two hits on us. I also don't want to be in Western Canada. Let the let the British defend it because we can counterattack it better. Um I really don't know. I don't think we want to counterattack in Hawaii because that just means that we'll lose our battleship in the following turn. He can send his battleship here, his sub from down here, his aircraft from over here, his bomber in Tokyo. It seems like a bad idea. Oh, speaking of which, what did the Japanese buy for their turn one? Oh, wrong one. Japanese, they bought just transports and a factory. And they put the factory in Kawatung. So that's a standard opening to try and get factories on the mainland so they can just produce units straight up and go and attack, attack, attack. Okay. Okay. Back to the matter at hand. We're going to undo our moves into Pearl Harbor. It would, we, we would destroy what they have there, but it's not really that good. I don't care enough about it. So what we're going to do is the standard run away. Uh, and I'm going to check our history one more time. We did buy a fighter. So these... American fighters, we have three of them right now. Next turn, we'll have fully loaded aircraft carriers. Uh, and this Eastern Canada location is actually really good for us in that from Eastern Canada, your troops can go directly to Norway, but they can also, because it connects here through Eastern Canada, Atlantic provinces, to Algeria or Western Europe. However, that only really benefits from having your convoys over a space, and we can't do that because then we'll get attacked by that sub, and with a lucky hit, he'll kill us. I mean, I don't want him to destroy my cruiser or any of the stuff I deploy. We can bring this destroyer around, so next turn we'll have a destroyer to fan him out. And that should be good. There's some infantry in Sing Kang. For the same reason as before, we're just going to leave one guy behind to try and... If they want to attack it, that's fine, but I'd rather have my... Like, let them use their air force on that. They have all these extra planes, that's what they want to use them for, is really blowing up individual locations. And there we go, so the, the, the Americans are quite the quiet turn. Oh, we got to move that battleship. I almost didn't move the battleship, jeez. What a noob. And there we go. So let's just hit, oh, we want to move this, this bomber as well. I'm not sure what we're going to use the bomber for, but there we go. Done. And then we have no non-combat moves. We didn't do any combat moves for that matter uh, in the first phase of the turn anyway. 
Are you sure you don't want to move? Yes. You have two carriers and move phase. We will put our carriers here and we'll deploy another plane on the carriers. And we got an infantry for, for funsies. And there we go. We've played an entire first round of the game. Next up is the Russians' turns again. We are already under immense pressure from these tanks and air forces and stuff. I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but you'll have to find out in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed. I sure did, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.